So as I told you, the Kenyan system is wired and is built in such a way that they are automatically meant to frustrate and undermine and suppress young people, young innovation, young entrepreneurship, anything young. Uh, th that that's their uh, primary uh, primary goal primary mindset is that let's uh, let's suppress these people because they think that by suppressing innovation by suppressing the next generation then they will secure their position uh, and they can can continue to operate they don't understand that everything can coexist you can uh, still push or you can incentivize young entrepreneurship, young leadership and still maintain your power. They don't understand that. Then they think that by demolishing, then you're, uh, you're, you're securing your continued domination in the fields of uh, politics and those, those other areas. So, which is why now I was thinking about the lady who asked a question to William Ruto. Uh, you, you have to understand that even amongst the young people, uh, the system has managed to select and sieve and elevate the few young people who are who regurgitate mainstream uh, depravity, who uh, who are custodians, who are who who are better placed to talk to young people in the language they understand, and they can tell them that your oppression is justified. So like that lady, you know, she said that she was part of the budget team. We are already complaining that uh, the budget is uh, unfairly targeting industries related to young people. So beauty, cosmetics and stuff like that. We're talking about the digital economy uh, is, is done. Is, is the young people amongst amongst us who are, we can call them sellouts, they go and then they say that, yo, we can do this. We can suppress young people like this. So think about it like your former high school. Eh? And uh, and if you're in a boarding school, for instance, that's where I think that's where the, the system, the, that is the best model SI unit of how a system of governance is. Uh, you, you remember the people who are, the, or the, the, the guys who are made as uh, prefects. They, they used to take the, the most the sellers the guys the snitches the guys who are just rubbish their work over the weekends was just looking and writing lists so those were the ones who were made prefects in the same way the ones who've been foisted by this system uh, this governance system we have in kenya are the ones who you know they when they go there when they sit in those meetings the, the the first thing they are going to propose is how to continue oppressing the young people and then now the old guys they love hearing that eh? I, I was thinking like uh, one of the you remember around 2017 uh, the government uh, by then the health cs was mailu if i'm not wrong this guy who used to be the ceo of nairobi hospital then he banned shisha he banned shisha because saying oh shisha has adverse effects on health uh, blah 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 and then they banned shisha yeah and and now you uh, you 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 question yourself asking these guys who can release contaminated sugar release it to the market nobody has been arrested only people have been suspended and they, you can see the suspension was based on you, you know they were cherry picking who they want to suspend based on whether you are appointed by the by the last regime eh? so these guys who are releasing poisonous sugar in the market you think they care about your health no they were burning shisha just because they can just because it's enjoyed by young people just to create and then now well once you create uh, once you over regulate uh, an industry then you create another sub industry for counterfeit for bootleg for anything so now the bootleggers are still part of the system the guys who can be able now to ship in those things under the radar but in bulk and then now whatever you are acquiring for 1000 then you're acquiring it for 3000 this is how they create a problem and then they purport to create a solution to the same problem they've created so yes so so, so that lady is asking a question and then but uh, but uh, later i was told that of course when she says oh we want a kra tax collector's day uh, then 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 it's gonna trigger a, a flurry of uh, procurement tenders you know all of these things that they, they you know it's gonna be something so within a short while it will be one billion shillings just from one idea so she when she was talking like that Probably she she had been staged by her colleagues or some people, but she that is an, a proposal that is so welcome 
to the depraved minds of the old establishment because they that's all they they, they derive joy from blocking people because now she's there and she's saying i'm in a budget committee and what is the biggest uh, cause of consternation right now is the budget we have, nobody is happy i've never seen an issue that has united uh, kenyans to 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 that extent like like the budget everyone across the divide across the whatever we you, people in rift valley people in central people in coast everyone is saying that this budget is awful and here you are without any honor of sh uh, or shame saying i am in the budget committee you see but you are there because you help to extend you help to propagate you uh, mainstream uh, the old order you are you are you are their favorite you are their beloved because then when you go there your first instinct is to yeah is to is to is to propose things that that are going to make it make make life hard for young people so there's this guy called Dennis Itumbi the other day he was talking about uh, Madaraka Day and of course as usual many of you were baited by the of course his looks and then now he's lost weight and then now all of you have suddenly become health experts and then you missed the main point and i keep telling you don't lose the focus he was talking about madaraka day number one he said that madaraka day will be sp will be celebrated over one week what are we celebrating over one week well we are supposed to be eh, we are supposed to be in an era of austerity but but then and then now he started saying this is how we are going to start madaraka day and then on monday this one will be there the guest of honor will be anwa Iguro. on tuesday it will be prime cs on wednesday it will be rigavi gashagwa on thursday then he, he went step by step regurgitating mainstream you know first of all just you can see one of the reasons why he was appointed or he was uh, whatever he's within those circles is because out of anywhere he can be able to plug the names of eh, the people the oppressors he can be able to plug them in any in any occasion even when it's not not necessary number two he's why are we he's saying that we decided that madaraka day celebrations will be celebrated over a period of one week who did he consult who did they consult did they consult you because all as we know we are supposed to be celebrating for one day so the question is why are they now stretching it for over one week what, what is what is what is so important but but it's because number one it creates an opportunity for procurement tenders and whatever the people who are going to be supplying tents there and whatever you know you've noticed every everything about this regime is about tents you have they have to be a tent and then they have to be pa and then they have to be whatever all of those are areas of eating because these guys are not creative enough to generate wealth They've destroyed everything else. They've destroyed sports, arts, everything else. They are now imposing taxes on the digital economy. So now the few people who are who are bootlickers, the few people they can be thrown for scraps. Hey, you are there. You are a DJ. You provide sound system. Unarushi waka scrap. You are there. You supply tents. You know. Now that is number one. But number two, the most important why it is being spread over one week is because each and every day it will be live somewhere on tv or it will be streamed and then you guys are there you're watching and then the whole day you've watched establishment propaganda you've been watching people coming there spewing their toxicity these are the ones coming there so every day you're being dumbed down with low vibrational energy and you wonder why you're so docile you wonder why you are you are so politically dormant you are you are politically you're not even you don't even have an opinion because every day you are breastfeeding on this toxicity yeah you're there you're listening and then now on monday they've even drawn out the schedule for you to listen because they want you to it's almost like a, a a balanced diet breakfast lunch and dinner so they've pangered for you from monday tuesday wednesday thursday every time you're going to be listening and you're there glued in life so who who is the idiot over here certainly not the people who are in power because they have devised a way to keep you in a constant state of of hypnosis eh? <laughs> they've devised a way because all they need to do is to have something live on tv they've paid and then don't forget they're paying for that and then they, and then they come there and then they've scripted the or the the, the whatever the speakers and then you guys are there so you while Dennis Itumbi, you guys were so focused on his health as if your doctors, you should have been focused on why or, or what he was talking about. Why are we celebrating Madaraka Day over one week? 
do, do we have that amount of money? Do we have, eh? shouldn't we be approaching an, an era of austerity? But it's all for the propaganda value. 